Recordings in progress. Okay, here we go. So let's talk about this. So let's jump right into it. Let's jump right into this, the meat and potatoes of this. Has anyone looked in the MLS this year and seen, are there more closings or less closings compared to last year? Less. Less. Less closings. Less closings, right. So each individual city might be different. You might be working a city where maybe there's more closings. I, I don't know. But as a whole in the MLS, there's less. Actually, you don't have to write these down, but I, I just did some research here. <laughs> January, now this is year over year. So January 2022 versus 21. January was down 9.8%. February was down 9.1%. March was down 7.2%. April was down 15.4%. May is down 13.8%. So the trend is that the percentage of closings is getting higher. Could that have something to do with the fact that we're finally seeing the effect of the rising interest rates, potentially, that there are less properties closing? Okay. <clears throat> the pendings. Now, in order for a property to close, it has to go pending first, typically. Pendings in May in the MLS were down 32%, which means that June and July closings will probably also be down 15, 20%, so and so forth. So we're certainly noticing a fair amount of less closings in our marketplace. Now, here's the thing. Does anybody want to take a guess, ballpark figure, on how many active licenses there are in our MLS? Anybody want to take a ballpark figure? How many active real estate licenses are there in our MLS? 11,000. Throw a number, 11,000, okay? Someone else throw a number. 7,000. No. No. Anyone else want to play? It was like 40,000. 40,000? No. The, mm -hmm. the number of active real estate licenses in our MLS, okay, our local MLS, which covers predominantly LA, San Bernardino, Orange, Riverside County, most of those areas, 93,690. There are 93,690 active real estate licenses in our MLS. So who's working? Wow, that's a great question, Tess. So, so that's 93,600 that are actually members of the PWR, RCR. Correct. They're members of the board. They've paid their board dues. They've done their continuing education. They've paid their license renewals. 93,000 people with an active real estate license that are part of a board that could close a deal if they wanted to. And only 9,000 sales. <laughs> yeah. So, so okay. So, Tess, to answer your point is who's working? Well, there's 36 people on here and Neil and I are two. So, we got 34 agents are working. Okay. So, we got that going for us, which is nice. But to so, but to Fred's point, there's 93,690 people that could potentially close a deal. Okay. Now we obviously, we know a lot of them won't, but they have the potential to, and we're seeing the trend of less and less closings. Now I'm not telling you this to freak you out or scare you in any particular way of like, oh my gosh, but to kind of also give you a little bit of a for some of you might need a little bit of a jolt to understand that in a marketplace when there's less closings and 93,000 potential competitors, can you afford to be a B plus real estate agent? No, no, nope. no, you can't. You cannot afford to be a B plus real estate agent. 
you need to be A plus. You need to be A plus plus. Now, some of you probably have no idea what I'm talking about because you were maybe C or D students. That's a different conversation. We'll talk about that another day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, Robert? I don't even know what the hell an A plus is. How do you accomplish that? We're going to have to grade on a pretty big curve. All right. But you can't, you can't be B plus, you can't be B, you can't be C, you can't be, ah, you know, I'm kind of good at this. No, 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 you gotta be A plus plus to generate business at any reasonable amount in this marketplace. So thought number one is I need to be A plus. I cannot be anything less than A plus. I need to be A plus in this marketplace. Now here's the good news. Here's the good news. Okay, because I've kind of gave a bunch of bad news. <laughs> Here's the good news. When a market like this happens and there's 15% less closings, 13% less closings, and 93,000 potential competitors out there, does your competition typically elevate their business and their skills, or do they typically just walk away? Walk away. Walk away. Walk away. They walk away. That's it, because this is important to know. And I'm not saying this is a joke. This is a real thing. Most people don't become real estate agents to work. They become real estate agents because it gives them freedom and flexibility, which, as most of you know, because you've heard me say this before, are what I call the two F words of real estate. Freedom and flexibility. Okay. But that's what most real estate agents, that's why most people get a real estate license. They don't get a real estate license because they want to put in a hard 40 hour work week. They want the freedom and flexibility. So now you're telling them, well, now you, you got to be a plus. So it means you got to work a little bit more. You got to make more contacts. You got to preview more property. No, they're out. So the good news is you have an opportunity despite all of this going on to really take advantage and help your business. And we're going to talk about a little bit how to do that. So let's talk about how do you become A++ in this marketplace? I wrote down a list of ideas, list of thoughts here. We're going to go over those now. Now, some of you are already A++ in some of these things. Some of you are not A++ in some of these things. Some of you think you're A++ in some of these things. But maybe not. I'm not trying to be mean, okay? I'm just being honest, <clears throat> okay? My father told me one day, this is, you know, you, know you, get, you have to get some ego checks every so often. And my father told me one day, I was, I was really frustrated because, you know, I was, at, I was at a stage in my life where I just felt like I wasn't getting the opportunities, right? I was, kept getting screwed out of deals. And my dad said, well, here's, some, let me tell you something, son. Get screwed out of a deal, get screwed out of a deal. Get screwed out of two deals, you're not very good at your job. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> so ego check, right? Oh, I'm not getting the deals. I, you know, I'm getting screwed out of this. Me, 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 me. No, no, no. Sometimes we need an ego check. So for some of you, you might think you're A plus on this, and maybe you are. Some of you, you might think you're A plus and you're not. It's not me being mean, it's just me trying to be helpful to you. Okay. They're not listed in any particular order of importance. Some of these you've heard before, okay? But let's go ahead and dive into these. So how do you become A++ in this marketplace? First thing I wrote down here is confidence in what you say. Confidence in what you say. <clears throat> to have confidence in what you say, you have to eliminate two letters. Does anyone know what those two letters are? You've heard me say it before. Letters or two words? Two, well, uh, it's one word, two letters. Um, 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 if you want to have confidence in what you're saying, you have to eliminate the letters U and M. Um, will you cut your commission? Um, just, just shake their hands and walk away. We want to list high. Um, it's over. It's a wrap. You've lost all confidence. Um, uh, uh, 
You've lost it. Now, is it possible that you say, um, and you don't even know it? Anyone have any ideas on how you can find out? Record your calls. There we go. Record your prospecting calls. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Maricela. Thank you for everyone else that nodded your head or verbally said record. Record your prospecting calls. So what I would challenge everybody to do is record your prospecting calls. You want to become A plus in this marketplace? Let someone else listen to your prospecting calls and give you fair feedback. Not mean feedback. I'm never mean. Neil's never mean. Nobody's ever mean. But be open to a little feedback of, hey, this is where you can improve. This is where you can improve. Things along those lines. Record your prospecting calls. You want to become A plus, take some accountability, record your prospecting calls, and send it into a coach or an accountability partner. Now, you don't have to record their end of the conversation if you don't want to. It's not a big deal. We just need to hear your end. If I'm listening to you, I can figure out what they said. But you have to have confidence when you say no ums, no ahs. Okay. I wrote down here confidence in what you say. Objection handling is nothing more than making common sense of the situation. Objection handling is nothing more than making common sense of the situation. I did that objection handling class a couple of weeks ago where you all were just throwing objections at me and I was just handling them. And some of you, I thank you for, you know, said, wow, that was really great. You know, you're so quick. You're so this. It's, it's objection handling is just making common sense. If you can't make common sense, you can't handle the objection. So think about price. I want to list it high. Well, let me ask you something. Anyone ever did, has anyone ever done some maybe car shopping, car comparisons online before going to the dealership? Anyone ever done anything like that? Okay. Or looked up something online? Well, let me ask you something. If you've done some stuff online before you go, have you ever looked at a car or something like that and said, oh, I'm not going to pay $60,000 for that car and then not gone to the dealership? That ever happened to people? Yeah. Isn't that the same concept in real estate? Yeah. Buyers go online and look at the photos and say, oh, 850, I'm not paying 850 for that house. I'm not even going to go see it. It's common sense. So how do you handle an objection straight? It's just common sense. Most buyers won't even go look at a home that's overpriced. Would you rather have a bidding war in your home or not have any offers to negotiate at all? It's not magic words. It's just common sense. So you just simply need to have confidence in what you're saying. But if you make common sense of the situation, it's easy to have confidence in what you're saying. If it doesn't make common sense, you won't have confidence, which means you're trying to handle an objection that can't be handled which means you're working with someone that you shouldn't be working with. Confidence in what you say. You need to have confidence in what you say if you want to be A++ in this marketplace. Are there a lot of people giving misinformation about the real estate world? Yes. So how is a client, how does a client know who to believe? Got to have confidence in what you're saying because gosh, you're telling me that the market has shifted in my area, but so-and-so is telling me that it's hot. How am I, who am I supposed to know to believe? It's going to be the one who's got some confidence in what they're saying. All right. The next point I wrote down here, energy and excitement, energy and excitement. You want to be a plus plus in this marketplace. You need energy and excitement. Now, I wrote down a couple notes under energy and excitement. You know the basics of it. But let me ask you this. Do you tend to believe someone who is excited about the opportunity more than someone who's not? Yes. Yeah. Okay. If you don't believe me, why do you think infomercials are still around? Okay. People on infomercials are selling you products that you probably don't need. Oh my God, this thing washes your car in like four minutes. Do you ever wash your car? No, but it washes it in four minutes in case I ever want to. This vacuum cleaner is amazing. You have hardwood floors. That's not the point. 
<laughs> because the salesperson on the infomercial said, you got to have it. But wait, there's more. And we're, what's the more? What's the more? I could get two and give one as a gift. Yes. Right? You tend to believe people that are more energized about the opportunity. It's the same thing in sales. They're going to be more, how do they know who to believe? Well, if you're excited about the opportunity for them, if you're excited about their opportunity to sell, their opportunity to buy in this marketplace, if you show that excitement, that energy, that makes you more believable. So you have to have that energy and excitement because there's so much misinformation out there, because there's 93,000 real estate agents with an active license. Those are just people with an active license. Does anybody know anyone who doesn't have an active real estate license, but is somehow a real estate expert? Anyone know anybody like that? Yes. So there's 93,000 real estate active licenses in our MLS, and there's probably another 50,000 experts without a license. Energy and enthusiasm makes you more believable. I also wrote down, Hunter, energy and excitement. It gives them hope. It gives them hope. In 2022, some of your clients need hope, predominantly buyers. They need hope. They, and they're frustrated. Prices are high. Interest rates are going up. Competitive marketplaces. They need hope. You can't give anybody hope being boring, being non-enthusiastic, non-energetic. The energy enthusiasm gives people hope and they need hope. Part of your job in 2022 is to give people hope. You got to have energy and excitement to do that. I wrote down here, third point under energy and excitement. Do people make decisions based on emotion? Yes. Okay. You can't create emotion without energy and excitement. They, 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 they um, people are emotional beings. They make decisions on emotion. If you're not excited and energized about the opportunity they have, they're not going to connect emotionally. And then therefore you're not going to get them to make the emotional decision. You need to get them to list their property right now at the price that you want, the terms that you want. It's just not possible to do. You have to have that energy and excitement to create emotion. For those of you that have never heard me share this, some of you have probably heard me share this four or five times. The greatest example of that is Tony Robbins. It's the greatest example of that. It makes no logical sense for a human being to take off their shoes and socks and walk across hot coals. That makes no logical sense. Sorry, walk across what? Robbie? Hot coals. Oh, okay. Thank you. That makes no logical sense. So imagine Tony Robbins saying, okay, Robert, so here's what you're going to do. Um, you're going to take off your shoes and socks barefoot, and there's 10 feet of burning hot coals and you're going to walk across them and it's going to be a great experience. No, no, Tony, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. But Tony Robbins goes, all right, Robert, this is what's going to happen, man. You're going to take off your shoes. You're going to take off your socks. You're going to walk across these 10 foot of hot coals. And it is going to be the most mind blowing, life changing experience of your life. And then you go, okay, <laughs> you take off the shoes and socks and you walk across the hot coals. Something that makes no logical sense, but his energy and excitement about how this is going to be a life changing experience brings out my emotion and I go forward. That's it with real estate. You got to find out their motivation. You got to bring out the emotion and you can only do that with energy and excitement. So you want to be a plus plus in this market. You got to have energy and excitement. Now I always make this little bullet point on energy and excitement. I'm not asking you to be me. You know, that's probably annoying, but I get this all the time. Well, Robert, you know, I don't have your energy and your enthusiasm. I'm not asking you to do that. But you can have energy and enthusiasm without being an expressive, without being Robert Hertel. Mike Ferry is like the exact opposite of Robert Hertel. 
And yet you feel his energy and enthusiasm. Neil is an amiable. And yet you feel his energy and enthusiasm. So don't make the excuse that, well, you know, I'm not Robert. I don't want you to be. Have higher goals. Energy and excitement. Okay, the third thing I wrote down here, you want to be A++ in this marketplace, make the client feel protected. Make the client feel protected. Real estate is typically people's largest financial asset. Yes or no? Yes. yes. Hello. Thank you. Did I lose everybody on the energy and excitement? We don't want to be energized, Robert. We're leaving. All right. Yes, it's their largest asset. Now, in the world of 2022, is there also, is there, are there also a lot more concerns about scams? compared to years ago. Not, not even just scams as far as somebody stole my money. That's obviously a possibility. We get threatened with cyber attacks on a regular basis. I don't know what that means. I just know that I've taken all my credit cards off of automatic payments. So that way, if somebody logs into one of my accounts, what, what, you know, so you know, I go to Dunkin' Donuts to get my coffee. You log into my Duncan app, you know, my credit card information is not in there anymore, right? So there's those concerns, but there's also concerns about getting scammed of hiring the wrong person to do the job because there's so many negative reviews about things out there where the reviews weren't as big as they were years ago. So a client needs to feel protected. Now, here's the other thing. Are there a lot of clients that are a little unsure about what's going on in the world of real estate? Yes. Yeah. Are prices going up? I hear prices are going down. Interest rates are up. Are they going to keep going up? Are they coming back down? Are there less closings? Is the market going to crash? So they have all these thoughts going on. They're hearing all these different things. They're reading all these different things. They need to feel, they need someone to make them feel protected, make them feel important, make them feel safe and secure in whatever their largest asset is. So here's what I wrote down under make a client feel protected. Ask them what's important to them. What's important to you about hiring a real estate agent to help you sell a house, hiring a real estate agent to help you buy a house? Because if you ask them what's important to them, then it puts them in control, right? It's about them. Now, if you figure out what's important to them, what does that do for you? Get you the information you need to make them feel. <laughs> there it is. Well, what, what, what's important to you about a real estate agent? Well, I want a real estate agent that does XXX next. Okay, great. Because there was 10 things I was going to talk about, but you mentioned these three. I'm just going to hit these three over and over and over again. But it also makes them feel protected because, oh, yeah, they're asking me. This is what I want. I wrote down here, right? The question I, I said, ask every single lead, what do you need to hear or see from me to help you decide if it's better for you to list now or later or buy now or later? But I'm asking them, what do you need to see? What do you need to hear? Now, here's the thing, though, about making them feel protected. Whatever they say they need to hear or see, show them, don't tell them. Well, I think that prices are going to go down, so I want to wait. If you tell them prices are not going to go down, are they going to just magically believe you? No. No. So you want to make a client feel protected, show them because they heard from somebody else that prices are going to go down. They read somewhere that prices are going to go down. So you're now the one telling them, no, they're not going to go down. Uh, that doesn't make them feel protected. Show them. Show them that prices are not going to go down. Give them stats. Give them information. Share your screen on Zoom. Print something out and bring it to them. You want to make them feel protected, give them the data. But now here's the thing. This is really important. It's okay if it doesn't make sense for them to buy or sell. Opinion. You want to make a client feel protected, accept the fact that it's okay if it doesn't make sense for them to buy or sell. 
So let me give you an example. Well, what do you need to hear before you list your house? Well, if I see that prices are starting to go down or flatten out in my marketplace, I'll sell it. Okay, great. Let's take a look. And you see in their marketplace that prices are still shooting way up, the days on market's down and prices are selling for way over list price. Based on what they said, doesn't make sense for them to sell it right now. So don't say, yeah, but wait. You No, it's over. Because this is what people do. Yeah, look, the trend shows that prices are still going up. The days on market's down and people are bidding above list price more than ever in your marketplace. But wait, no, 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 no. You should sell now because, dude, you're showing me the data. I showed, I told you what I wanted to see. You showed it to me. Based on what you're showing me, it doesn't make sense. Don't try to then be the but wait person because what are you doing by being the but wait person? What are you now showing the client? You don't have confidence in your words. You know? We don't have confidence in your word and you don't care about them. You care about your commission. Hmm. They told you if prices start to go down in my area, I will sell. And you've given them, let's just say in their area, because every area is different, in their area, you show them that prices are still skyrocketing. And then you try to convince them that, no, 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 um, you should still sell. It's commission breath. So show them, but be okay. Does anybody know what Neil always recommends asking a seller a seller who, who's also going to buy a replacement property. Does anybody remember what Neil always says you should ask them right before you start the presentation? What if you really? have, you have, absolutely have to sell? Right. Yeah. I heard a couple of people of you say that. Is there any way for you to keep this property and still buy your replacement property? Is there any way for you to keep your property and still buy your replacement property? Now, some of you are going, well, what, if they say yes, then I lose my listing. Yeah, but doesn't isn't that in the best interest of the client? Right. And it automatically takes away the, oh, they're here for the commission. You're making them feel protected. I wrote down here, making them feel protected. Give them a list of the affiliates that are going to be involved in a transaction. The title, the escrow, the TC, the home warranty people. You know who's going to be involved. Give them their phone numbers, their names, their company, and what they do. Because here's what you, they don't want. Here's how you make a client not feel protected. They come to you to sell their house. You are now the face of the transaction. Uh, Robert, you're my, okay, it's all through Robert. And then all of a sudden they get a phone call. Hey, Robert, this is ABC person from XY title. I'm going to be helping you on the sale of your house. Um, wait, who are you? I don't know who you are. You're calling me from a different company, not even Century 21. No one told me you were going to be calling me. Oh, and what I need from you is I need you to fill out this statement of information. It's got your name, your phone number, your email, your social security number, and all your addresses over the last 10 years. Um, I thought I was dealing with Robert on this transaction. Now I'm getting a random phone call from someone who's from a different company and they need my information. Does the client feel pretty protected at that point? Nope. 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 Oh, and then five minutes later, hey, Robert, this is Jane from ABC Escrow. Who? Yeah, no, I'm going to be helping you with this. I'm going to send you over some documents. If you could sign and initial those, those would be great. And the font is negative four and it's 45 pages. <laughs> um, what? <laughs> Client feel protected? No. And then they're going to get, so give them the list of the affiliates. Hey, just so you know, this is the title rep. This is their name. This is their company. This is what they do. When you get a call from them, you'll know. This is the escrow company. This is blah, blah, blah. So when they get a call, hey, Robert, this is Jane from ABC title. Oh yeah. He, Robert told me you're going to be calling. Now they're protected. They're not protected when they just start getting random phone calls. Oh yeah. I'm the transaction coordinator. I didn't know there was a transaction coordinator. What do you do? Why are you asking me for information? Because now, not only do they not feel protected, they feel that you got their deal and then just gave them away. Sign the contract. Thank you. Now you're dealing with everyone else. You're out of my life. That's how they feel. Don't do that to yourself, right? 
I wrote down here, make them feel protected, give them a specific plan of action, and then let them hold you accountable. Because feeling protected, again, they don't want to feel scammed. They don't want to feel like they hired a bad person. This is their biggest financial asset. They're paying a ton of money in their mind to sell the house. You want to make them feel protected. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, here's my specific step-by-step -step plan of action. So you know exactly what I'm going to do to get your home sold. And then just so you feel better about hiring the right person, I'm going to call you on Friday. I'm going to have you pull out this sheet and we're going to go through all the things that I've done so you can check them off. You think clients would feel protected that you're in their best interest if you gave that to them? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Now here's the trick. If you're going to do that, you have to make sure that you only put things on your plan of action that you're going to do. Some of you have like very big plans of actions that I know you're not going to do. Anybody want to guess how I know you're not going to do all the things on your plan of action? because one of them and i've seen some of you still send me this no matter how many times i make this comment will send me a plan of action and it'll be the mike ferry plan of action and mike ferry hasn't updated his plan of action which means one of the things you're sending to your client is that you are going to fax a benefit sheet to all the top agents in the marketplace now let me ask you have any of you faxed a benefit sheet to <laughs> the top agents in the marketplace anytime recently. <laughs> so you need to make sure that whatever you put on the plan of action, you're going to do it. Otherwise, they're going to hold you accountable and go, oh boy. So make sure you're looking at that. All right. I wrote down here next. Okay. In terms of how to be A++ in this marketplace, the 180 degree rule of real estate. Does anybody remember what the 180 degree rule of real estate is? Whatever most agents are doing, do the opposite. That's it. Whatever the masses are doing, make a 180 degree turn and do the, do the opposite. So let me give you an example of doing the opposite. Send a pre-listing package to all of your listings. Even if it's a past client, center of influence, it's a fixer, it's uh, easy sale, it's a no-brainer, it's your parents, pre-listing package to everybody. Most agents don't do that. I wrote down here next, pre-qualify using all of the questions. Most agents do not pre-qualify. Here's what most agents do. I'm interested in selling. I'm interested in the value of my house. Great. How about Tuesday at four? And then they set the appointment Tuesday at four. Now they show up Tuesday at four. At Tuesday at four o'clock, if they haven't pre-qualified, they are essentially just going to tell the seller what they think about selling their house. If I pre-qualify, I get to tell the seller what they want to hear regarding selling their house. So pre-qualify all your people. I wrote down here next, 180 degree rule of real estate. Be specific, not vague. It's a hot market. That is the lamest thing anybody can say. Hot market. For who? I want to buy a house. It doesn't seem very hot for me. <laughs> it seems pretty cold. Well, it's a hot market. Well, compared to what? Last year, the prices were going up 20%. This year, they're going up 10. Does that make it hot or does that make it cooling? It's, you know, don't do that. I do a ton of marketing. What the hell does that mean? I got a huge database. I don't know what that means. Be specific. You want to be different, be specific. Here's a specific plan of action. Here's the exact things I'm going to do. I'm going to send it out to this exact amount of people. I'm going to, I have, I have 275 people in my database. They're all going to get this specific, not vague. It's a great time to sell your house because prices are up 16.2%. Days on market are down 10.8%. Like specifics. Don't be vague. I wrote down here next on the 180 degree rule of real estate. This is a, this is a, this is an interesting one. Don't think about the cost to you. Think about the benefit to the seller. Don't think about the cost to you. Think about the benefit to the seller. 
here's what I mean. Even right now, if a home is priced right, is it going to sell relatively quickly? Yes. Yes. Have I lost everybody except for two people? I heard Elisa and saw Ray not his head. Yes. No doubt. Okay, great. No doubt. Yes, yeah. Okay, yes, great. Yes. It's going to sell relatively quickly. So some people think, well, this is priced right. This is a no brand. It's going to sell quickly. I'm not going to pay for a professional photographer. I'm not going to pay for the Matterport 3D. I, I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to pay for the marketing that I normally do. I'm not going to do all that because this problem is going to sell so quickly. I don't want to spend the 500 bucks. You are thinking about the cost to you, not to the benefit of the seller. Because does the seller want? Even though it's priced right, does the seller want professional photographer or iPhone photos? Does the seller hmm. want the <laughs> virtual tour or does the seller not care? The seller care. wants yeah. you to do the marketing. Seller wants you to do all this stuff. Everything. So you're yep. thinking, oh, I don't want to spend the 500 bucks. You're not thinking about what the seller wants. And if you're not doing what the seller wants, what won't you get after this property closes? Referring. What won't you get? You won't get referrals. A seller's not going to go, hey, look, you should use Robert. Um, he came in, he took photos with his iPhone, and he didn't bother by doing a virtual tour. He didn't pff, marketing. He didn't pay for any of that stuff. Useless. He didn't do any of that stuff. He's the guy. No one's making that referral. What they might say is, oh, no, Robert was great. Um, you know, he did professional photographer. We had the Matterport. We had the virtual tour. We had, he did all this marketing, Facebook ads. He did postcards, flyers. He did all this stuff in the home sold in seven days, $20,000 above list price. That's what they, that's what they tell you. But see, most agents think, well, this is going to sell so quickly. It's not about this sale. It's about getting the next one. Because if you're focused on that, if you're focused on worrying about the seller, that will in turn become more profitable to you. So get the professional stuff done. Last thing on that point, do the neighbors go online and look at the listing? Yes. Okay. And you're going to do just listed calls, right? Or door knocking something, right? Yes. Hopefully. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so you do iPhone photos, no virtual tour. Neighbors go on and see that it's a crap looking listing. And then you have the audacity to call them. <laughs> And say, I just listed the property. You should list with me. And they're thinking, why would I do that? You listed, you listed our neighbor's house, and I can see you in one of the photos from the reflection of the mirror. Prospecting. It's crazy. <laughs> so don't worry about the cost to you, focus about the benefit to the seller. And I don't want to be mean, but Rob, one of the things that I said to the people is like, who took those pictures when I'm calling expired? <laughs> you know what? And 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 Luis, I, I we're we're at one o'clock, so I'm not gonna finish. To, well, let me just finish two things here because that was one of this is the very last point, and then we're gonna get it. I'll be done here in just a couple minutes. The last point I wrote down here, what it takes to be A plus plus in this market is be greedy. Be greedy. Two points on being greedy that I mean by this. Okay, and then I'm going to go through this quickly because I'm over time. I've talked about this before. Steal other people's databases. One of the opportunities you can be A++ in this marketplace is there's all these people that have all these questions about what's going on in real estate. They're hearing, they're hearing and seeing all this crazy stuff. And the person who was their quote unquote reliable real estate agent hasn't called them in like two years. It hasn't called them this year, or they're only calling them once every six months and they're using, it's a hot market. Be the person that in your community, they can rely on for real estate information, correct real estate information and take their databases. It may not result in a deal today or maybe even this year, but you take enough people from the database and it grows, next year you start getting referrals. Next year you start getting deals and you start getting more and more and more. The second part of being greedy, and I've never said this before in a meeting, okay, but I think this is important in 2022. This is the last point, and then we're going to get to our open mic prospecting in terms of being A++ in this marketplace, being greedy. Don't be afraid to 
call out other agents to a seller regarding the other agent's crap. Here's what I mean. I, I've never recommended this. I hate getting into this kind of stuff. But here's what I mean. Real estate agents, your competitors are essentially bad mouthing you all the, all the time, right? Everybody say yes. Okay. Here's the greatest example. Here's the greatest example. Every real estate agent says they're number one, right? Well, if they're number one, doesn't that essentially mean that they're telling a seller, I'm number one, I'm the best. So if you list with Eddie, you're making a mistake. That's what they're saying. If they're number one, I'm the if I'm the best agent in town, I'm essentially saying that all of you are below me. You're weaker than me. And I'm telling every seller, essentially, that if they don't list with me, they're making a mistake. They're, they're listing with a worse agent. They're bad-mouthing you like that all the time. They're telling agents, they can, they're telling clients, they can get them more money. They can cut their commission. They can sell them faster time. They may not be using you by name, but they're constantly telling sellers how great they are compared to everyone else. And we just have to sit there and take it. No, call them out on that. So here's, here, let me give you an example. Well, the other agent said that they could do this. Okay, let me ask you, Mr. Mr. Sell. They said they could get me more money. Okay, did they provide you any different comps than what I provided you? No. Okay, based on the comps, just the comps alone, does it seem like your house could sell for 900,000? No. So essentially that agent's just lying to you. I mean, I mean they at least could have provided a different comp. <laughs> something make something up. Well, yeah, I guess that's point. So do you want to get in relationship with your largest financial asset with someone that's lying to you right from the get-go? No. Okay, great. Don't be afraid to do that. Don't be, don't be the one that's just like, well, you know, the other agents said they can get them more money and no, call them out on it. Well, the other agent said they could do this, 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 and this. This is my favorite all-time one. Okay, great. So I'm curious, did the other agent provide you a copy of their schedule? Oh well, no. Can I tell you why that concerns me? Yes, they probably don't have one. See, I don't know if you know this, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, but real estate agents are independent contractors. That means they can come and go as they please. They could decide if they don't want to work today. If they do want to work today. They could decide if they want to come in at work at 10 o'clock and leave at 12. They can decide if they want to have a three-hour lunch break and they can't get fired. There's nothing they can do. So if somebody that doesn't have a schedule, that's probably kind of how they treat their day. So let me ask you something. Your largest financial asset, $900,000, you're going to pay $50,000 in commission. You want to do that with someone that's got a set schedule, treats their business like a CEO, or someone that just kind of comes and goes as they please. Well, I want someone with a set schedule, treats their business like a business. Great, then let's sign the contract. The other agents giving them a bunch of crap about how great they are. Cool, let's talk about it. Don't be afraid to call them out. Because they're calling you out, even though you don't know it. Don't lose a listing because of that. Okay, questions on anything we went over? All right, very good. All right, well, hopefully there was one or two things.